Hey guys, I found an article for the end of the day. Wanted to go live. I think you're going to learn a lot from this video that will help you build wealth and thrive in a world of out of control central banks and big governments. <laughs> I got my rebel capitalist shirt on, just got back from the gym. All righty, let's dive into the content and get the old screen share going. Boom, there we go. This article is on Apple News, and unfortunately, where'd it go? Well, no, it's not coming up here. Let me see. Oh, I see. It's behind. There we go. Hopefully, you guys, let me go back and make sure you guys can see that. When it's on Apple News, it's it's really weird. All right. Well, I'm going to assume that you guys can see it here. And let me try to increase the size. So it'll let me zoom in, but unfortunately, my little highlighter deal doesn't work on this. But at least let me get it big enough to where you guys can read it. Okay, hopefully you guys can read it there. Let's go through. So another GameStop. Here are the next 10 most shorted small caps. And if you didn't see my video yesterday or haven't followed what's going on with GameStop, basically, it was the most shorted stock in the stock market with over 100% of the float or 100% of the shares available for trading of the float had been borrowed by short sellers. So they were borrowing on margin to sell short, betting that the stock would go down. So a lot of people on Reddit in this thread called Wall Street Bets saw this and they're like, okay, let's go ahead and buy call options for uh, GameStop because they knew that if they buy those call options and the market makers, because the hedging and variety of reasons have to buy the underlying shares, that moves the price higher. When the price moves higher, that forces all of the short sellers to cover. So how do they cover? They have to buy those shares back and that drives the price up even higher. And then you just have this, this feedback loop that just makes this stock skyrocket. And it went from, six dollars a share to or maybe even under two dollars a few months ago to over a hundred and fifty dollars yesterday then it crashed back down we've seen volatility back and forth so the article is stating or showing you what the potential next GameStop stocks are based on their short interest compared to their float and you can see that here so we've got dillard's uh pharma Legand, Pharmaceuticals, Bed Bath & Beyond, AMC, Networks. So you guys recognize a few of these here, I'm sure. But that's not really my point. <laughs> and that's not what I wanted to go through. What I wanted to go through is a thought experiment. And let's just assume at $2 a share, you bought game stock you went long because you thought they were maybe changing management and you said okay well i get the bear argument but all of that's baked into the stock and i think it's a value play now and if you look at the the price to book or if you look at any of these fundamental metrics i think that there's value there you're, you're buying a dollar for 50 cents let's say that's what you concluded with your analysis and then let's say the stock goes up because of this massive short squeeze that was produced by this online thread on Reddit, Wall Street Bets. And you bought at $2 a share and then you sold at whatever, $100, $150 a share for a huge profit. My question to you is, would you be right? Were you right or were you wrong? Because the price did go up, but it had absolutely nothing 
to do with the reason you thought it may go up. And you can take it to an extreme. Let's say that you would have you thought that Bitcoin would go up or you thought Tesla would go up or GameStop, whatever, because of some sort of because of astrology. <laughs> say that you 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 read your charts or whatever and your I don't know how they work, but let's say Saturn was in Uranus or <laughs> or whatever it is and because saturn's in uranus oh well that means that oh my gosh that means gamestop is going up so you buy for that reason it goes up because of a short squeeze again are you right or wrong and i we really need to think this through what my main point is you can't get too fixated on the price direction. And personally, I don't think the direction of the price should validate whether you were wrong or right about buying a stock, a Bitcoin, gold, anything, any asset, real estate for that matter. What determines whether you were right or wrong is if you bought the asset when it was cheap. Because really, that's the only thing we can truly know. That's the only knowable information. Everything else is, is a guess. And even when you're trying to figure out the probabilities, it's still a guess. That's why I always say that I want to buy a dollar for 50 cents. I don't want to buy a dollar for $3 because I think the dollar is going to go to $5. It's a completely separate mentality because even if that dollar goes to $5, it, it could have gone there because of what I, the reasons I thought it could have gone there for something that I totally don't even understand because there are so many cross currents at play, especially when you're trying to figure out things like the FX market, the dollar compared to the Euro or the yen or the Aussie dollar. I mean, let, let's be honest here. I mean, there are quite frankly, millions of cross currents that go into the price direction of the dollar against XYZ currency. I mean, it, it's just not possible for any human being or even a computer to know all, uh, to, to calculate everything at all times and to give you uh, any reasonable probability in the short term. I think in the long run, it, it's different. I think that's where we have a big edge. But in the short term, it's just, it's really unknowable. But what, again, my point is you can know by looking at chart of oil, if at $25 a barrel, historically speaking, if it's cheap or if it's expensive, that is knowable. And if you make your decisions based on that, regardless of what happens with the price, if you do that consistently, you're gonna have winners, you're gonna have losers, but over time, you're going to have a mathematical edge. And if you have an edge, the longer you play the game, the more the law of large numbers is on your side, the higher the probability that you come out a winner. Hopefully that makes sense. That's the reason. I know I kind of went off track here, but I wanted to use this article to illustrate my first talking point to really take us through that thought experiment, which I think is far, far more important. And that is don't get too fixated on the price. And even if the price goes up, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're right or wrong. You've, you've, it, it goes right back to blackjack. Just because you win or lose a hand, it doesn't mean that you're right or wrong. What the... 
defining line or, or what determines if you are right or wrong when you're playing blackjack is if you played the hand correctly based on the probabilities. It has nothing to do with whether or not you lose or win the hand. Okay, so that's what I wanted to go over. Let me get rid of the screen share. Hopefully you got, yeah, I think you guys were able to see it. I think that Apple News thing worked out, although I can't do the highlights on that. Feedback, guys, any questions on what I was just saying? Or do you think I'm absolutely out of my mind? <laughs> and that as long as the price goes up, that means that you're right, and assuming you're long. And if the price goes down, that means you are incorrect. I don't see it that way, but uh, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. Let's see, we got George, tell Moody the millennial that I said hi. <laughs> I will do that. If I run into Moody millennial, I think Moody millennial might be at my birthday party on Saturday. Not sure. I actually promised them that I would use their preferred pronouns. And they accepted my invitation. So we shall see. Buy cheap and hold on. There you go. And then, <laughs> uh, that's great. The Reddit squeeze. No kidding. No kidding. What's really interesting about what's going on with Reddit is if you try to figure out what's next. See, the, he the hedge funds know what's going on now. So, I mean, let's use some game theory. If the Reddit thread is going to go after another target, you see the hedge funds, are they going to front run that? Or are they going to put on, or are they going to put out some bait, like a honeypot? Maybe what they'll do is they'll just put on a small enough bet on the short side to tempt the Wall Street bet guys that are, far more or far less sophisticated to come in and try the same thing because they get greedy. And then as the Wall Street bet guys drive the price up with the short squeeze, they're squeezing out the hedge funds honeypot, the, the small bets they put out there just to tempt those guys to get in. And as those guys buy those calls to drive the price higher, when it gets really high, now the hedge funds come in and then they start shorting heavily to do the opposite. You see, so then the, the long guys are getting crushed, the, the retail guys that get in there from the Wall Street bets, then the hedge funds come start coming in with the real money and start short. So let's use GameStop as an example. At $2, the hedge fund guys are putting in just some little bets just to tempt just so those, the uh, Wall Street bet guys see the numbers and like, ooh, this is a sweet target. Well, let's say they do that with Dillard's next, right? And then once, Dill I have no idea what the share price is, but let's say, let's just use the same numbers. So then it starts going up from $2 and jumps up to 100 or 150. And then the Wall Street, or excuse me, the uh, hedge fund guys come in with real money. And then they start shorting it which means they're borrowing shares and selling them in, driving the price down, forcing all the Wall Street bet guys to now sell those long positions they had and then driving the price down further. So then the, the hedge fund guys are making money because the stock's crashing from 100 or 150 because they put out that, that bait in the first place. And I, I'm not saying this is what's going to happen, but you never know. It, it, you never know. It, and, and keep in mind, these hedge fund guys, these high frequency traders, they have access to all the, the trades that the retail guys on Wall Street bets are making. They have access to all those Robin Hood trades. How do you think that if you have a Robin Hood account, how do you think that you trade for free? It goes back to that old saying that if you're not paying for the product, you're the product. <laughs> or in this case, your, your information, your trades are what Robinhood is selling to 
the hedge funds, so they can front run you. And they can take that data and they can make trades based on what you're doing to fade your position and manipulate you into doing things. See, this is all going on behind the scenes. And, and people who, you know, sit there and say, oh, this is so great. We're, get, we're getting free trades. Well, listen, you ain't getting anything for free. It's just you're, you're, you're paying with a different currency. <laughs> Uh, instead of paying with cash, you're paying with your private data. I don't know which is better and which is worse. I'll let you be the judge. But you see what I'm saying? It, 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 I don't. Are we going to have this? It, we're just taking the the casino to a whole new level, where meaning the stock market, where people aren't even buying and selling based on fundamentals at all. Zero. There is no part of fundamental analysis anymore in the stock market. It's all just psych psychology. It's all like a game of poker, basically. So it'll be fascinating to see how the hedge funds and the big money and the guys with these, you know, algorithms and billions and billions of dollars at their disposal, how they what their next move is. Because I can promise you, they're looking at what happened with GameStop, and and they're. You know, they're they're rubbing their hand just like Mr. Burns. He <laughs> smithers. <laughs> and they're trying to figure out how they can work the Wall Street bet guys, just like the Wall Street bet guys worked the hedge funds with this whole GameStop short squeeze. So we'll see. The drama continues. <laughs> All right, guys. I will... Uh, Bid you adieu. We'll do some shout outs here. I want to keep this relatively short. I kind of got off on a tangent there. So uh, let's see. We've got uh, Sebastian Brozek in the house. Taylor Kaplan. Tactius. 1979. Jim Wolf. John D. Stephen Clark. Fleming Fitness. 555. Frontier. G. May. Time to Fly. Daniel McKiskey. Nicholas Ramirez. Barros. Hey, Shaded. Uh, Catman, Steve Z, Space Jet, Jess, Jason, excuse me. Uh, oh boy, it skipped on me. Oh, here we go. Mitchell Coslin, Carlos Danger, Jane, Chicken Dinner 13, Mr. Happy Triggers, Terry Wilman, Scooter, Gray Fox, Fiat Hedge, Matthew T. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for hitting that notification bell for the live stream. I really appreciate it. it helps the algorithms. And I will see you on the next video.